lot of people didn't like Age of Ultron. I thought Age of Ultron was great, and it gave us a lot of stuff that was important to the Infinity Saga. You are listening to the Huggable Tokyo Jameson. Well, TJ, you just performed in The Sound of Music in the Statesville Theater. So what did you have to do for your audition as Max Detweiler? So as Max Detweiler, I had to read uh, a few lines and then be prepared to sing a song. But just the, just the fact of me auditioning was an entire experience. I wasn't going to audition. Why? I, you know, performed in my 20s. Um, and, you know, doing local theater, you know, back on the East Coast of North Carolina, um, I did, you know, performed in the Eyed Couple as Vinny. And that was, I'll say, around 25. So I go a decade plus without performing at all. So when auditions come up, I was so nervous. I just, I didn't think that I had the chops. I didn't think that I had the skills anymore. Uh, to, to pay the bills. So I said, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to audition. Other things were going on that day because it was around Christmas time and I was, you know, doing other things. So I, I, I went to the audition. I said, you know what? I'm going to leave. I'm gone. I'm out of here. And, um, you know, one of my, you know, I, I call them a friend now. Uh, she said, you know what, T, don't just leave. They, they're expecting you go tell them bye before you leave. And I'm like, okay, you know what? That's right. I, I should at least be, you know, cordial. So I go back and um, I'm like, all right, y'all, I- I'm just going to go ahead and split. And they're like, uh, no, have a seat. <laughs> have a seat. Just, to, just, just sit down and talk to us for a minute, man. We miss you. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I sit down and, and we're having a conversation. They hand me the script and they're like, turn to page 48. And I'm like, okay. So, now I'm reading the the introductory scene of Max Detweiler to the play, and you know it, it it was just it was just comfortable it was just comfortable. But when it came time for me to sing, I wasn't prepared. I you know I don't think that I have the best singing voice. So, but but I do sing every day as a part of my mental health plan. So I I, I mumbled across a song while I was there. I, I think I sang. Uh, uh, Jingle Bells, because, you know, Jingle Bells starts off real croony. Yeah. You know, dashing through the snow. That's what I was doing, you know, and it, it was horrible. So um, so I leave. I'm like, you know what? I'm gone. Y'all got so many people out there in the lobby. Just have a great time. So I went home, and <laughs> I got inebriated, and then I recorded myself singing Just My Imagination by The Temptations, and I sent it to them on Facebook. And that is how I landed Max Detweiler. (laughs) So had you performed in high school drama class or anything like that? I did. It's weird, you know, my introduction into theaters, because me being my size, I was never pushed into theater. I was always pushed into athletics and competition. Um, But I, I actually wrote my first play Um, When I was 13 years old, um, I wrote a play for about seven seven characters um, set in a church because I was raised in a church. So I used people from the church that I went to and we actually were able to perform it. It was really fun. So then whenever I went to high school, even though I played football and basketball and track and field, um, I still was able to uh, perform in Annie as Bert Healy. You're never fully dressed without a smile. Never, ever. Right. And I was also in Showboat as well as Arsenic and Old Lace. Everything that I've ever been able to do is it's, it's God-given. It's like I, I wish that I could say, you know, um, that I went to a class or had someone school me. But I have a great, I, I'll say, ability to imitate So I pay attention to everything, even with how I met you, you know, I was, I was paying attention to how people around me prepare for scenes. So 
You know, in doing stage acting and doing The Sound of Music, I was blessed to work with a phenomenal professional actor named Mike McCall. And, you know, rehearsing with him, seeing, you know, his preparation going into performances, I tried to bring that in. And then, you know, some of the stuff is just, you know, me having been such a big fan of cinema, um, you know, I just, I imagine what I think goes into it. So when I'm doing character development for Max Detweiler, I mean, that was three weeks of intense research and I had never seen The Sound of Music. So I felt like I brought something different. Some people do get into it without having had that that training before. And, you know, that's okay. Everybody's journey is different. I've been fortunate um, to have some awesome opportunities and I'm just taking life one day at a time. So I'm looking forward to some more awesome opportunities. Now you had mentioned drinking. So I wanted to get into Andrew McCarthy's memoir. One of the things he shares is that he used to perform while hungover or intoxicated. Can you tell us about the time you had a drink during intermission at one of your shows and how it led you to realize you never wanted to do that again? This is recent, you know, where we're doing um, The Sound of Music and we had seven shows. So, um, you know, really nice size theater. And, you know, so on this last show, um, we sell out. So I'm like, awesome. You know, and the, the energy is there. Um, going into the show when we're doing vocal warm ups, like everybody is just playful. The energy is just so just amazing. So, <laughs> you know, we, we have uh, a scene where, you know, there's a party, um, at the Von Trapp's home and we have waltzers, you know, dancers that are there just for that scene. They have nothing to do before or after. So they literally would come in in the middle of the first act, you know, dressed in their full super fancy gear. And then they would go out. But, you know, they go out with glasses of what looked like wine or champagne. I thought it was all prop stuff because everything else is prop stuff on this last show. I walk past one of the uh, the dancers and I can smell that this is not a prop, baby. They <laughs> are drinking, and it's not even you know as simple as champagne. Like they're they're going in, like they've got some hard stuff. And I don't know what I, I guess it, again that that last night feel. I'm like, let me see if they're willing to share. They're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Everybody wanted to be kind and to pour my drink for me. So I have a shot of crayon apple being passed to me. So I pound that really quickly. Then they give me some Kraken. And I'm like, okay, well, this is not a shot. This is a whole glass. So now we got a 15-minute intermission. It's the last show. So we've got something extra going on in intermission. So I'm thinking 20, 25 minutes, I'll be fine. So I'm sipping on this brown liquor drink. And I get halfway through and I say, you know what? (laughs) I need to sit this down because um, I haven't eaten since around lunchtime. And I'm very, 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 uh, you know, prime. I'm I'm a big character in the second act. I'm a big character. I got a lot of scenes in the second act. And I actually start the scene off with... The children. So I'm like, I should definitely sit this down. Props to my scene partner, uh, the young lady, Jackie Grant, who played Elsa, because I told her, I said, Elsa, I think I got sauced up. Over the course of two months rehearsing, we had had conversations. And when I say I think I'm sauced up, she knows knows exactly what that means. So she ran and grabbed me a water um, so that I could chug that down. And then, yeah, we end up finishing a phenomenal set. Um, but yeah, never again will I do that, ever. Do not pass me anything but water or maybe some sweet tea. I just feel like the alcohol goes to your head so much faster when your adrenaline is running, and that is all stage performing is, is adrenaline and, and reaction. Yes. You're an advocate for Black men's mental health, which doesn't get talked about enough. So do you think getting into the performing arts was a means to escape the dramas of your life? 
I wouldn't necessarily um, call it escapes because I, I think that, you know, I'm fortunate with my mental health to say I have simplified my life as much as I possibly can. Um, and then I, I, and, and I, and being a realist, I recognize, look, we have to work. We have to work. So if, you know, if, if I go and I give my all at work, when I leave, I can, you know, live my best life. So me getting the opportunity to perform is me, I feel like giving back. Um, I, I feel like a lot of people ask, why am I here? Why, you know, the why question. And I feel like my answer to that question is I am here uh, to give back to other people, to help them in any way that I can. And if I've got ability and an ability to entertain, to make people smile, to make people think, to make people cry in a good way, if I can uh, evoke emotion, which I think is my talent, then I should do that uh, to help people. Um, so that's that's my bag. Some people have that natural ability to draw others to them. And I witness people being drawn to you. So what do you think makes you so huggable? <laughs> I, well, first off, I, I think that I resemble a life-size teddy bear. Um, so to have that going for me is a plus. But, you know, one thing that I'll say without getting overly spiritual, w regardless of what you believe in personally, if you believe in a higher power, then call that what it is. But... You know, I believe that we all have a little bit of God in us and, and, or your career, like I said, whatever you want to believe, it's there. Um, when, when we embrace someone and we have true intentions in our heart, I feel like there's that zing that Adam Sandler marketed in the Hotel Transylvania movies. I feel like that zing is real. That zing is not always romantic. Sometimes, you know, you just get a connection with another human being because, I mean, again, if you ask the question, why are we here? There's something special about being a human being. I mean, we are one of the most complex creations on this planet. So I feel like that, I mean, this is getting really, really deep, but it's just whatever you want to call the soul, the life source, the thing that makes your heart beat without you having to tell it to, when that connects with another, if there's a joy that just can't be duplicated, no drug can create that. And, you know, I'm a genuine person. I genuinely want everybody to have their best possible life. There's enough sun out here for everybody to eat. So I'm like, in that breath, I feel like people can just feel that um, because I hug with that. And when I hug, I hug with love. I hug with intentions on pouring myself into that person because being a bit of an empath, I feel like I, 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 I give and I take energy. So if you've had a bad day, when I hug you, give me some of that bad day because I'm just pouring love into you. And I feel like that with every hug and maybe that's tiring. Yeah. Because when I got home Thursday, I was sore and I was drained, but I feel like I touched some people that day. I think you definitely did. There were a lot of smiles that day. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. So let's talk about going to the movies. What happened in middle school when you took a girl out to the movies and would you let that stop you from trying again? <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago, my very first date, I go on a group date to see the movie Crooklyn in theaters. And this is aging myself. So if you know how old that movie is, that's me. So... <laughs> Um, you know, we, we go on this date and we're watching this movie and, and it's a great film. It's about family, but you know, it's weird because this, 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 this is about to get weird. Like, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm at that age where, you know, you're, you're questioning things. Do you kiss on dates and stuff like that? Well, on this particular date with this group of friends, um, a, com a conversation about feet happens in the theater, like, right? Like, it's so, it's, there's not a lot of people there. So, the conversation about feet happens, and all the girls are comparing each other's feet. Oh, my gosh. I, seriously, like, this is just, this. you can't make this up. And I am checked out, not because I have necessarily a problem with feet, not that I knew, but I just, I'm not going to sit there and stare at somebody's feet. 
So the young lady who was sitting next to me, um, who I, you know, had, had, had a thing for me, proceeds to say to everybody, I've got the prettiest feet, and he thinks so, and she puts her foot directly in my face. Let's just say her feet were not the most awesome. <laughs> oh, God, they were not. I think that was the first time that I recall making a joke to myself about throwing up into my mouth a little bit. Like, it was bad. Let me veer that away from feet, but still to the movies. So you cried during Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and I did some ugly cries as well. So what do you think the future will bring for the next phase of Marvel? We both mentioned crying during a film that is the last in its, in its trilogy. I would love to be able to say something extremely optimistic based on Guardians. But because James Gunn is now with DC, it's like, well, I'm excited for what I've been teased. I have no understanding or idea as to what's going on with Jonathan Majors. I hear there's something he may or may not be able to continue as Kang. And I was excited to see him as Kang because, one, his... Um, his cameo in Loki season one was amazing. One of the best single appearance episodes I've ever seen. Like he owned that entire episode. With his uncertainty, there's question. But Deadpool 3 is coming. We get another Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. That's going to be awesome. You know, they're going to eventually bring in the X-Men. And one thing that I can say about Marvel is they have done the Infinity Saga was amazing. Yes, Phase 4 and, you know, Phase 5 has been kind of clunky, but it's because they're trying to, my opinion, and they're trying to introduce potentially some complex stuff. And they have to do it in, the, in, the, in a way that makes everyone somewhat of an expert so that they can introduce more stuff and not have to take as long. We're talking about multiverses. Yeah. You know, if you've never actually thought about another version of yourself living a life completely opposite of you, I mean, like, man, all these people that we're excited about, we're excited about the Fantastic Four, we're excited about the X-Men, all these characters have complex histories, and they've got to make all of this stuff gel. So, yeah, it's going to take them some time, and they want to do it right. So I'm, I'm patient. There's so many storylines that can be explored here. Well, now with Disney, now you've got the shows. And at first, I thought that the shows was going to be overkill, but the shows have been so different from what we've been able to see in film because now they have more time to work with. Yes. WandaVision was something completely different. That was awesome. It was. It was awesome. And then Loki was awesome. Looking at Moon Knight and the holiday special. Who knew that we were going to get a holiday special? That was good. Yeah, we've gotten some great, great stuff. So I hope that people can just sit back and be appreciative of the fact that we are truly in the golden age of television. And I think, you know, Marvel, with the criticism that they've gotten, it's only because they've done such a phenomenal job. The people have been spoiled. The Eternals got the majority of the hate. I didn't necessarily vibe with the Eternals the first time I watched it. But once I did a rewatch, I was totally on board. So maybe the Eternals in the future will be looked back on as a phenomenal film. Who knows? Yes, I agree. Well, can you tell us about the podcast you're a regular contributor on so that we can find you? Yeah, absolutely. So. I work with a comedian out of Virginia um, named Joey Harris, and he um, created the Joey Harris Podcast. He also has um, a channel on YouTube, um, the, the Joey Harris, where he and I are currently watching shows that may have came out a long time ago, like The Sopranos. He, he, Joey had never seen The Sopranos before, whereas I am a big fan. So we watched the entire show, and we have done episodes discussing what we've seen. So I'm curious to see what's going to come next after The Sopranos. But yeah, we do have that podcast where that, that comes out weekly. 
So on Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, search The Joey Harris uh, Show. It's, it's a lot of fun. Very cool. Now, are you going to get into the prequel of The Sopranos? All the Saints of Newark. And yes, I have seen that. And yes, we are going to uh, review that as well. Um, and that's that's the exciting thing about it. It's like you have to do the spinoff. So if we do Breaking Bad, that means we've got to do um, El Camino. We've got to do Better Call Saul. And all of that is amazing television. That's what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, back in the day, we had Cheers and M.A.S.H. And soap operas were the lick. Like, you could get into Days of Our Lives and General Hospital. But now, now, because there's so much streaming, there's so much content, there is a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that probably shouldn't have been made, and it's only been made to fill slots. But there is still some amazing writing being done right now. Yes. Actors get, actors deserve credit because actors are bringing those words to life. But those are still some amazing words being put down, and that just needs to be acknowledged for sure. Yes. Yeah, so shout out to the writers picketing at the writer's strike. Hopefully they get what they need to make a living. All right. Well, TJ, it was fun hanging out with you again. I've been sharing a picture that you and I have together, and everybody's like, wait, I recognize her. And I'm like, I bet you do. Oh, that's sweet. Will you be blessed now. Thanks for touching base with TJ. Don't forget to like this episode if you enjoyed the content. Till next time.